Hey guys, it's Jen. Thank you so much for joining me today. Today I have some project shares for Adornet. I am an ambassador for their Diana Markham stamp products. So um, I received the uh, January Recipe Stamp Club release recently. I showed you guys in my last week's haul. So I wanted to show you some projects that I made with them. And all of these stamps, I'm pretty sure they're available on Adornit.com. If you're not part of the Recipe Stamp Club, you could go ahead and order them a la carte. I will leave the link to the cherry stamps down below. All of these stamp sets are cherry themed and they're just beautiful. I couldn't wait to start working with them, so I, I did a lot over the weekend with the cherry stamps. So this is my recipe book, the second volume. If you've been following along, I put my recipe stamp club stamped image that I color and decorate in my book. So um, we will fill this up at the end. I'll show you the different projects I've made, and then we'll put it into the recipe book. All right, so uh, like I mentioned, there were several cherry stamps in this release. So let me show you the one. This one is a separate purchase. This is not part of the Recipe Stamp Club. This one is chocolate covered cherries and it has a really good looking recipe on it with the pretty jar and a bow on top. And I just thought this would be perfect for paper piecing because it has such this huge area here. So I thought it'd be fun to cut that out of paper. I did a lot of paper piecing with these um, projects. And this stamp is pretty big too. I'll measure it in my project. So this is the first one I wanted to show you. And this is a card that I made. How cute is that, right? So this paper that I used here, this is cherry paper. This comes from a um, Park Lane paper pad that I got at Joann's. I think it was last year and it was like a, a dessert one. So I was looking for some cherry paper to use. I have different ones, but I like this one because the cherries are pretty small and um, it's, it's the pattern isn't too, uh, too dark, so you could still read the recipe with the cherries behind it. So uh, yeah, so I stamped this, the stamp on some plain white paper and on the cherry paper, and then I cut the cherry paper, paper out and glued it on top of the white paper. So that's how I did that. And then the other parts, I used my um, alcohol markers to color. So let me measure the stamp for you to give you an idea of how big it is. This whole card, I think I made it's five by seven. Uh, a little bit more than five by seven. It's about five and an eighth. So the, the cherry covered or chocolate covered cherry stamp is about five and a half, a little bit more by uh, three and three eighths. So it's a nice big size. So I, like I said, I stamped that on white paper and then I cut this out with the die that I got at Surprise Creation. I don't think they have that available anymore. And then I used some pink ink on the edge. And this is from Memento and it's one of their dewdrop inks. And this one is a chalk ink and the color is called Pixie Dust. I got this in a pack from Hobby Lobby on clearance last year. And this is kind of like an oxide ink. Um, you know, it's good to use on light paper or dark paper actually for oxides, but I like to use them on light paper too. So I just used a brush and just kind of, you know, buffed it around the edges. And I think that gives it like a nice highlighted look. And then I matted that with some dark brown paper. I thought that went back to the, the jar. It looks, you know, looks nice together. And then I used that cherry paper again for the card base. And I did make the card a little bit bigger than five inches because I wanted you to see like two, a, a full row of cherries on each side. So like I always say, when you're making your own cards, you can make them whatever size you like. So yeah, I thought that came out so cute. I just, I love doing the coloring and I did use my gel pen, which I forget to use sometimes, but I did use it to add some highlights. And I think that really um, adds a nice touch to it. And then on the inside, I use this stamp, which comes from, uh, let's see. I think that was, yeah, it comes from this set and this is the add-on set for the uh, recipe stamp club for January. So it has all these, you know, different little cherry images. So I used have a cherry on top kind of day for the uh, saying on the inside. And over here on the left-hand side, that cute little cherry um, 
like button cherry print that comes from this stamp set which is a separate purchase as well so that's the um, the one that I used and I use this one too I'll show you that later but anyway I wanted to try a couple other stamps on the inside and used a die in my stash same one as from the front for the gingham paper in the uh, in the background and yeah I think that came out so pretty so that's my first project I, I loved making these I, I just couldn't stop making cards all of mine well I have two cards to show you and then the recipe insert okay so the next card I wanted to show you I used the one that I just uh, showed you quick is that this recipe stamp is called cherry crock pot jam and I like this too I thought this would be nice to paper piece with that pretty like fabric looking lid on the jam and then there's this like cut out of a recipe for jam as well and I love the cherry print in there so that's what I use for my next project and that is this card so again I just love how it came out so I used some pink gingham paper for the for the fabric top and then just colored in the cherries the cherries come on the stamp itself so and then I did some paper piecing also with the same pink gingham paper for the recipe on the front and cut that and fussy cut that out it wasn't too bad with all those scalloped edges I, I was thinking it would be kind of a pain but it really wasn't bad at all it's you know it's not that big so it didn't take too long and then I used my um, alcohol markers to color in the cherry jam colored red added some white gel pen there as well and then this is an Arala Miha shop paper in the background that I printed out I just love having those digital files because you can print them out whenever you want and then I use some green gingham paper for the bottom and again I printed that out from Etsy that's from a different shop but it comes in like all different colors in your file and then I wanted to add a little extra touch to this so I added some actual rickrack and I glued it on first and then I sewed it on if you could see there's a stitch line going all the way across and then I hot glued on a button tied with um, some thick thread on the bottom left and the top right and then I did fussy cut this whole thing by the way if you um, if I didn't mention that and then I popped it up on a little bit of foam tape so it adds just a little bit of dimension and then I matted this um, the the this paper onto some red solid paper and then I used some gingham gardens paper on the um, what's it gingham gardens no it's the Maggie home ones what's that one called Oh, no, I can't remember. You know, the one with the garden. <laughs> so I used that for my card base. And then on the inside, um, the paper that I used for the inside is a different card base, actually. And that has some, like, pink-lined paper. What is that paper called? Hold on one second. Right, it's called Garden Party. I thought of it as soon as I went to go look for it. So anyway, this is from Garden Party, as well as this pink paper in the background. And then You Are Cherry Riffic comes on, was it on this one? Yeah, still on the same stamp set. So I thought that would be a cute sentiment on the inside. I colored it. I used some different ink on the edge of this one, but just like the pink one that I showed you, it was a green one. So that's what that card looks like. And let me measure the stamp for you. Top to bottom, including the sentiment, is about four and a quarter inches. And then left to right, it's about three and a quarter, give or take. So I just love how pretty this is. And I think that'll make a nice card for, I don't know, any occasion, you know. And uh, they have recipes on them too. So it's kind of like a gift in a card. Okay, so the last one I wanted to show you is my page for my recipe stamp club. And I've got to clean off my table, it looks like. Don't look at that. <laughs> okay, so the recipe stamp club, this is the stamp for that one. And this one is Berry Chocolate Cherry Brownies. And I love how this is, um, the recipe is in the leaves and then they, well, the ingredients are in the leaves and the recipes are in the cherries. So I thought that was so cute. And I did paper piecing on this one as well. This one comes with extra stamps, this, this string of cherries, a separate little cherry pear, and then the word cherries on the top. So let me show you the card that I made. And I always make them six by eight so they'll fit into my recipe book. So this is how it came out again with the pretty pinks and greens and oh, I just love it. So I used this um, 
die that I used to cut this one out. That is from Penny Black. I thought I had left it out, but I guess I didn't. But it's a Penny Black uh, die set called like Zigzag Stitches, I, I think, something like that. And I used that same pink ink to, um, you know, just give a little shading on the sides. For the cherry itself, I used some, um, I think this is a Rala Miha shop paper for the leaves, paper piece them. This is actually one whole unit that I cut out and just glued it on top of the white paper. And then I used some pink paper with little white hearts on it, also printed out from Etsy for the cherries and paper pieced those as well. And then I just used my alcohol markers to color in the stems and to give a little shading to the banner. And then this bow here, that actually comes from this stamp set. So I stamped it out again onto some white paper, colored it just a little bit, and then fussy cut it and put it on the top because I like this bow for like a, a, a decoration. See, it's on that one, um, on the chocolate covered cherries as well. And I wanted something like that for this page too. So yeah, I just cut it out, added a little bit of bling, um, some enamel dots there and on the edges of the paper. There's some more gingham paper from Etsy. This pretty like shiny textured green paper is from Dollar Tree and this pink paper for the base is from Arala Miha. So that is my recipe um, stamp club page. So let's go ahead and add that to my book. And this will look familiar to you guys if you've been following along. This starts at April of last year. So that's April's recipe. Here is May, the pineapple loaf. June is no peak beef. July is tea party cakes. August was mushroom soup. September was pumpkin pecan coffee cake. October was turkey noodle soup. November was giant ginger cookies. And then December was butter up biscuits. Similar color scheme to this month's, right? So if, if you know me, you know those are my favorite colors. So let's go ahead and add this into the back. And I'm gonna have to get another volume soon because I usually start them again in April. So just have, what, two more months to add to this one. So yeah, that is January. So pretty, right? Oh, I love it. I hope you guys like my projects for this month. Leave me a comment. Let me know what you think. I will leave the links to, well, the link to the cherry stamp page on adornit.com. If you want to join the recipe stamp club and get your stamps automatically every month, um, I'll leave that link down below as well. Don't forget to check out the other ambassadors who create beautiful projects and it's just fun to see how everybody interprets the different stamps. All right, you guys, thank you so much for watching. I'll be back soon with more crafty videos. Until then, I hope you have a great day. Take care, everyone. Bye.